I asked Copilot to build me a flow that deletes all PDF files from a document library. This is the result. It's an okay flow. It honestly looks like something I would have built a couple years ago. However, it's inefficient. In this Power Automate tutorial, I'm going to break down this flow that Copilot has built and show you how you can make it more efficient. In my SharePoint library, I have a custom view that I've created that displays all PDF files no matter what folder they're in. I'm also going to display the total count of files. In Power Automate, run the test. The flow has failed. Scroll down to the body outputs. There is an error with the filter query action. The ends with operator is invalid. SharePoint only supports the starts with operator. Copilot has replaced the previous filter query with a new one. Unfortunately, this filter query won't work since it's looking to see if any of the file's names are equal to .pdf. This action won't return any files. Let's try one more prompt. Copilot has inserted a condition action. This looks a bit more promising. However, the flow is still inefficient. First, I'm going to save this flow and switch over to the classic designer because I can't stand the new designer. It's also still a bit buggy. When possible, it's always a good idea to limit the number of files returned from this action by using a filter query. Also, the get files properties only action returns files and folders. If your document library has a lot of files and folders, your flow will run a lot faster if you filter out the files first. The next issue is that the flow is using an apply to each action to loop through all the files returned from the get files properties only action and running a condition action to check if the file is a PDF. This is extremely inefficient, especially if you have to loop through a ton of files. Use a filter array action instead. In the get files properties only action, add a filter query. Enter this. This expression will return files only. If you only want to return folders, enter a one instead. Whenever I use a filter query in a get files properties only action, I always like to return a count of files returned from the action. This next step is optional. However, it can help with troubleshooting later on. Insert a compose action. Add an expression. Use the length function. Select the dynamic content tab and insert the value dynamic content from the get files properties only action. I want to run a test. Before I do that, I'm going to copy the for each, also known as the apply to each, action to my clipboard so that I can add it back in later. Delete it for now. Run a test. Check to see if the number of files returned matches the files you are expecting. To cross-reference this in SharePoint, you'll need to create a flat view of your files. In all of my SharePoint document libraries, I like to include a flat view. A flat view will display all your files without folders. In a document library, click on the view dropdown and click on create a new view. Give your view a name. Click on the view dropdown and edit current view. I like to sort my files by most recently modified. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Select Show All Items Without Folders. Press OK to save. With this view, I can filter and group all my files without having to dig through my folders. I'm going to display a total count for this column. I'll compare this number to the number from my Compose action in my last flow run. To filter all the files by a specific type, we'll need to use a filter array action. Customize the condition to suit your needs. In the From field, insert the value dynamic content from the Get Files Properties Only action above. In the First Value field, insert the file name with extension dynamic content. 
change the operator to ends with, and in the second value field, insert dot PDF. Although it may look like the filter array action can only take a single condition, it can take multiple conditions when you use the advanced editing mode. I'm not going to cover how to do that in this video. If you need to add multiple conditions to your filter array action, check out this tutorial. Whenever I use a filter array action, I always like to return the count of items returned in a compose action. This is helpful when building a flow as it can be used to troubleshoot your flow. Insert a compose action. Remember to rename your actions to keep things organized. Add an expression. Use the length function. Select the dynamic content tab and insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action into the length function. Run a test. Confirm the number in the compose action is what you are expecting. If the compose action isn't returning any items, you'll need to adjust your filter array action. Add a condition action. We'll use this condition action to check if any files have been returned from the filter array action before continuing on with the flow. In the first value field, insert the output from the compose action above. Change the operator to is not equal to. In the second value field, insert a zero. If the filter array action is not equal to zero, meaning an item is returned, add the rest of your actions for your flow into the yes branch. Insert the for each action from your clipboard into the S branch. Instead of looping through the files returned from the get files properties only action, you'll want to loop through the files returned from the filter array action. Delete this dynamic content and replace it with the body dynamic content from the filter array action. This apply to each action will now loop through all the PDF files returned from the filter array action. This condition action is no longer needed. I'm going to pull the delete file action outside of the yes branch and delete the condition action. Customize this part of the flow to suit your needs. For this flow, I'm going to delete the PDF files. This dynamic content is incorrect. What you need to insert into the file identifier field is the file identifier dynamic content. Unfortunately, there isn't any dynamic content from the filtery action to select from. What you don't want to use is the identifier dynamic content from the get files properties only action. If you do, the delete file action will nest itself inside another apply to each action, which isn't what you want. We need to compose an expression to return the identifier from the filter array action. Here's a little trick. Click on the three dots and select peak code. Locate the expression in the code and highlight the expression from the question mark till just before the closing double quote marks. Copy this to your clipboard. Delete the dynamic content and pull the delete file action outside of the apply to each action that was automatically added to your flow. Delete that apply to each action. In the file identifier field, insert an expression. Paste the content from your clipboard. Press the up arrow key to go to the start of the expression and insert the item function. Press OK. Run a test. The flow has deleted all the PDF files from this document library. What flows have you asked Copilot to build for you? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. Copilot has a long way to go before it can build an efficient flow. Till then, check out this video if you'd like to learn five tips and tricks that you can use when building your next flow. Thanks for watching.